Lesson five, looping. And we are definitely getting a little loopy with this one. This is like take five. Lesson five, looping. With looping, it's a programming structure that allows you to repeat a segment of code many times until either something changes or you've done it a predefined number of times. And there's a lot of cases where you use looping. Where I like to begin is with an old childhood guessing game. I'm sure everybody when they were younger played the guess a number between one and a hundred. And you could play it where if you had multiple people, the person who guessed closest to the number you had in mind won the last Twinkie or whatever they were trying to win. Or you can play it with just one person and you can tell them hot or cold to help them guess closer. So we're going to take that basic guessing game premise and we're going to discuss looping. Now you typically have to start with a loop, you start with the control loop variable. In this case, I've called the variable my var, largely because I didn't want to write out my variable. And I've initialized it to zero just because there might be garbage in that memory spot before we start. When I say get my var, and notice this is an input output symbol. Now, this is the correct way that it should be drawn, whether it's input or output. But if you're using visual logic, which we are for this class, you'll notice it changes the direction on input and output. And you'll see that in those lectures. So get my var simply means that if we're going to use get in the flowchart, that we're going to prompt the user to enter a variable, and we're going to store it in my var. Now, the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure it's reasonable. We're testing to see if something is reasonable. We're, this is aggressive or defensive programming, where we're trying to make sure that the user is not going to blow up our computer program. We really try to create user-friendly programs that are, I like to say that they are idiot resistant as opposed to idiot proof. It's like the difference between water resistant and waterproof clothing. Water resistant clothing will shed most water. Waterproof clo um, clothing, you can go out in a hurricane and still be dry. For the most part, we're just trying to get rid of common errors. It's hard to guess every error that ever could occur. But we're trying to make sure that we are error resistant. So we do defensive programming to check to see if my var is reasonable. So if we ask the user, please input a number between, between 0 and 100, and they put in Fred, that is not a number between 0 and 100. So what we want to do is we want to keep asking them again and again until we get a reasonable response. So when we get my variable, we're going to check, is it a number between 0 and 100? Well, if the answer is Fred, no, it's not. So we'll prompt them again, get my variable. And it will come back in here and it will check. And if it is a number between 0 and 100, we can move on to the next step where we have my variable equals answer. If it's true, we're done. If not, we go through this again. And we again have to check, is it reasonable? We have to drop it through that loop before we check to see if it's the right answer. Because the second time they put in, they could put in ginger. So we really want to make sure that it's a valid, reasonable number before we guess. Now notice I've done something here which I don't actually approve of. When you run out of space, when you're flow charting, you can connect it to another location by having a circle with a letter in it. And then if you put a circle with a letter in it over here, you know that this connects to that. There's also off-page connectors, but that's an on-page connector where you can go into multiple columns. And that's the proper way to connect things if you have multiple columns in your flowchart. So this is a very basic loop demonstrating the looping game of guess a number between 1 and 100. Sometimes when you're looping, you are doing basically a countdown, or you know how many times you're going to execute something. And you may know because you're going to get a variable and store it, or maybe do so, be doing something very simple like a rocket countdown, 10, 9, 8. And you can either count up or down. And you're going to do that. You can do that using a while loop like we've done in the past. We're working with while loops right now. And the first step in a loop is you're going to initialize your control variable, which in this case is i. Now, why would I use i as a variable? Is it meaningful? 
Well, yes and no. There are two common variables that programmers use if they're just doing a counter. They'll use C for counter, or, the, or they will use I for integer. And they're very common in a counter, in a for loop, in something that you're just going to do a simple count where it doesn't really need to have any meaning. So I'm using I, which simply stands for integer. It's a whole number. And I'm initializing it to 0. And then I'm going to check. If I is less than 10, then I'll display I. So here's my pseudocode. Variable I equals 0. If I is less than 10, display I end. Let's walk through what happens. So the first time I go through, I is less than 0. I check to see is I less than 10, and I display I. 0. The second time I go through, is I less than 10? It's still 0, and I'll display I. Wait a minute, this is a problem. Why is this a problem? This is one of the most common errors in looping. If you don't do something to change your control variable, you'll get an infinite loop. I would keep going through this loop forever because it would never change from 0. And this is the most common error when programming a loop. So what you actually need in here is to add one more step. We want to display i. And then we want to, I'm just going to put in i++. Plus plus. That will increment i. It will add 1 to i. So it changes. That will make the loop work. Very, very common error. So here, if i less than 10, display i, i++, plus plus, which is adding 1 to i, and that will fix it. Because when you're using a control variable, it has to change, or you'll get stuck in an endless infinite loop, which is generally a bad thing. So let's try it again. First time through, i equals 0. If i less than 10, 0 is less than 10. Display i, 0. i plus plus, i is now equal to 1. Is 1 less than 10? Yes. Go through again. Add 1 to it, it's 2, and you'll go. Now, we've gone through. i is, we're leaving here, i has gone from 8 to 9. 9 is less than 10. We'll display 9. 9 plus plus is 10 less than 10. No, it's not. So we actually counted, and we stop here. This is where we're done. We drop through because we're no longer less than 10. It's very common in programming to start counting 10 numbers from 0 through 9. And you're going to see that becomes important later because that's the way it's actually normally done in programming. Now this is an example of having of a loop. And it could be coded as a while loop, which is sort of like this. Or we could do this another way. And it's the exact same logic. And it does exactly the same thing. But this is called a for loop. A for loop is a very simple way to do something a specific number of times. And when you try this, you're going to be programming 99 bottles of beer on the wall. So when you do a for loop, and this is sort of generic, it's pretty much the same in every language. For int i equals 0. So that's our i equals 0. And I'm going to continue down here, normally just continue across. For int i equals 0, i less than 10, i plus plus. That's the whole statement. And you would do everything, usually in brackets, all the statements after it, each time before it incremented. So you could tell it how many times to do something. That's a for statement. And you can either increment or you can decrement. Let's look at the logic for the problem that you're going to face with 99 bottles of beer on the wall. And this is pretty much one of my favorite programming examples because if you were, and I've had, I had a final exam once where I gave the problem, write the code to display the song 99 bottles of beer on the wall. And somebody actually went through and hand coded every print statement. <laughs>
And that's a very inefficient way to do it. But they got it right, but they didn't have time to do the rest of the exam. I should have specified using a for loop. So, for, and we're going to do pseudocode. Int i equals 99, i greater than 0, and instead of i plus plus, it's i minus minus. i minus minus. And this is pretty generic. It would be for any programming language. And then everything inside of the brackets would loop. So if you remember the song, we would put in, we'll just say display, I plus bottles of beer on the wall, I plus bottles of beer, and so on, take what down, pass it around, etc. We're just going to assume the rest. Each time we loop through, it will change. So the first time we loop through, it's going to be 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer. The second time we loop through, it will be 98 bottles of beer on the wall, 98 bottles of beer. So it's way more efficient in less than 10 lines of code you can do the whole song for 99 bottles of beer on the wall. It's a very simple repetition, but it's one that we're all familiar with. And so you'll actually get to program that this week in the Visual Logic program, and it shows you the power of looping. So this could either be a while, or in this case, a for loop that's done with a counter. And for loops are very efficient. They're used a lot. It's probably the loop that I use the most. So what, regardless of what type of loop that you're working with, there are three basic steps. You have to set the start value for your control variable, you have to test the loop, and you have to change the control variable. If you make a mistake in any of these areas, you can end up with an infinite loop or just a broken program. Let's talk about the three types of loop. There's a while loop, and that runs as long as a condition is met. As long as the conditions are right, it will keep going, which means it might never run. Because if you have something that doesn't trigger the loop, you can go straight through. For example, if we were just doing the guess a number between 1 and 100, we would initialize get my ver. We would test my ver equals answer. And if they got it right the first time, it would just leave. Now you should program it better than that to give some sort of error message, but it might not actually execute any of the code under here. So the other type of while loop is a do while loop. And really all this does is it forces something to happen before the test. And a common way to do this is if you're, doing, if you're printing reports, you'll typically use a control break, which we'll get into in a later chapter, so that when you get to the top of a new page, you'll print all the headers. Well, usually you will do that first before you start testing anything. It'll make sure something prints so that you know that the report ran. Because there are cases, if you were doing, and you, if you had a business and you were doing trial aging of accounts, where you would check to see, you would display everybody who owes you money for more than 90 days. Now, if life is going well and your business is doing really well, hopefully you don't have any clients who have not paid you in over 90 days. So hopefully you'll just get the title of the report, the report headings, and nobody listed. But you'll know that it worked because you got the title and the headings because that printed while you're going into the loop. So a do while loop makes sure that whatever you're executing in the loop statement happens first and tests after. So it looks like this. A while loop is initialize, test, do stuff. A do while loop is initialize, do stuff, test. That's the difference between a while and a do while. It's where the stuff happens before or after the test. 
because if you're going to do stuff first before you test it, this will always happen at least one time, always. Whereas here, if the test comes up with the correct answer, you might never do stuff. So this is a while, test first. This is a do while, test second. There is one more type of loop which we just went through that's a for loop, and that's simply a counter. Now you can do a counter with a while or a do while, but a for loop exists to be a counter, to do something a specific number of times. Now there are a lot of common mistakes with looping. Um, common mistakes, you don't initialize, you skip this step. You don't change that sequence. You um, use the wrong comparison, compare later, less than when you wanted to compare greater than. So be careful because if you do it wrong, you can get stuck in an infinite loop and then the program will, you'll actually have to go in and force the program to end because it will never come to a natural end.